I'm going to talk about a violent and dangerous situation when concrete spalls in a fire. If you understand this video, it can save your life. It can also help you inspect a concrete structure that's been in a fire to help save the lives of others. My name is Tyler Lay, and I make these videos to help unlock the mysteries of concrete. When the outside surface of concrete gets hot in a fire, it can all of a sudden explode off like shrapnel flying in all kinds of different directions. It can hurt people. It can be extremely dangerous. Here's a picture of a column that was in a fire. The column didn't even get that hot. The fire wasn't even that close. But because the concrete was made of high performance concrete, very low permeability, the whole surface just spalled off. Here's where half this bridge in a fire exploded off the surface and went everywhere. It was extremely dangerous. It hurt cars, people, and it sent shrapnel hundreds of feet away from the bridge. This typically happens when either the concrete's wet or the concrete's made with really low permeability. And this phenomenon is called moisture clog spalling. So if you have a concrete member with fire around it or heat coming around, we're gonna look at a cross section or a localized area. Now on that surface, as it's heated up, the water is going to evaporate and travel towards the center of the concrete. Why? Because it's cooler in there, in the core. The water is going to start to condense and start to build. And then this concrete is going to resist the infiltration of, the, of this water, because that's what the concrete does. It's a very tight pore structure. We don't want water coming in, right? Well, as that water builds and builds, those pressures are going to grow and grow inside. And when the pressure exceeds the tensile strength of the concrete, the surface of the concrete is going to just blow off. It will suddenly just explode off. Now that surface, that heat is now exposed to the water again. So it continues. The water evaporates, it goes inwards, the pressure builds up, and it spalls again. Low permeable concrete, that's with like a low water cement ratio, anything below about a 0 0.40. Or if you use silica fume in it, these can spall at temperatures as low as 600 degrees Fahrenheit. This is not very hot. This is not damaging to the concrete, but all of a sudden you can lose the entire face of your concrete member. One solution to stop this is to actually incorporate plastic fibers into your concrete mixture at about 2% by volume. Those fibers will actually melt and provide channels for that water to get in and out, for that vapor to get in and out, and the pressures won't be as high and they won't spall. Spalling will often continue from the outside surface and keep going until it reaches the steel. Steel is a great conductor and it carries the heat away from the concrete. What am I talking about? Well, if I have a rebar bedded inside this concrete, once the surface starts to, to heat up and spall off, now all of a sudden when it gets to the level of the rebar, the rebar will carry the heat away in both directions. Now this is great for the concrete, but it's bad for the steel and ultimately bad for your concrete member. So since steel is this good conductor, it carries the temperature all along the bar. That means the entire bar will be at an almost constant temperature. And if the steel gets hot enough, then the entire bar can be ruined. So how hot can steel get in a fire? Well, here's a very cool plot. It shows temperature on the x-axis and shows the percent loss in strength on the y-axis. And this green line is just for rebar. When things get up to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, there's literally no loss in strength. But all of a sudden, it starts to drop. When you get to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, you've used up your entire safety factor. As in, the load that the concrete is designed for is probably going to be enough to cause the bridge or the structure to collapse. If we're using pre-stressing strand, that's shown in this line. Now, our limit is at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You're like, whoa, what do you mean? That's like not even near this loss and safety factor. Why are we so worried about 400 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, the steel will lose its low relaxation quality. It means under a constant load, it will just creep or move. It means the structure over a long period of time will deflect and deflect and deflect. This is something that pre-stretching steel is designed not to have happen to it but it loses this quality if it re reaches 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So the critical temperatures for rebar are 700 F for strength loss and 1000 F, that means when you have no more safety factor left. But pre-stressing strands a little bit different. It can't get as high, high temperatures. At 400 F, it loses its low relaxation qualities and that is a huge problem for the performance of your concrete structure. So how do you evaluate a structure in a fire? 
Well, what you have to do is you have to find the reduced material properties based on the estimated temperatures. And then you use these reduced qualities in your typical design equations to check the capacity. I'm showing the flexural capacity here. If your FY is not 60 KSI, if it is maybe half that, then you would plug that into this equation and you would see what kind of load can it hold. Beams is something that should be checked very, very closely after a fire. Why? Because we have all of our steel concentrated in one area. And that one area, if it becomes damaged, it's a problem. Another reason is as the fire increases, it actually increases the tensile stresses on the bottom fiber. That means it increases the load on the beam. It means it may fail without any additional load being put on it. Also, if any spalling occurs, it will directly expose the rebar to the temperature. Now we've already talked about at what temperatures the rebar or pre-stressing strands may be in trouble, but there's a something else that can happen. If we zoom in in this area, we can factually look at the bond. That's the grip between the steel and the concrete, and that can sometimes be damaged. What do I mean? Well, even though it may not spall in this area, even though it may spall someplace else, the rebar may heat up. And once it does, it actually may burn or destroy the bond between the bar and the concrete itself. And this localized destroying of the bond means your concrete will have poor flexural capacity. The bar may just rip right out of the concrete because it's not bonded well. This is crazy dangerous. So some rules of thumb. Concrete typically has great performances in fires less than two hours. Pre-stressed beams and any member that spall should be really, really inspected closely. That spalling can be a big deal. We also have to understand if we've lost our bond between the reinforcing and the concrete all along the length. The temperature limits, about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit is where rebar starts to become in trouble. And at 400 degrees Fahrenheit is the issue for pre-stressing strands. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And hit the bell. The bell helps you stay in touch, helps you stay focused on the videos that I'm releasing. Leave me a comment below. Take care, everybody. Bye.